This program is sponsored by the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media. As we heard, God has built his altar in our hearts. And for you to keep the fire of that altar burning, it is ignited by the power of the word and prayer. If you want to be a fiery believer, you must be prayerful and you must be a word lover. You must be a man or woman who loves to read the Bible. And you go to church to fellowship. Don't neglect the issue of fellowship. Because there God speaks to you. Because he promised where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in their midst. And the presence of many invites God. And it's in that kind of fellowship, according to Psalms 133, it says, Behold how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It says it is like the oil, the ointment that was poured on the head of Aaron. And it went down his beards until it went to the garments. And God says, There, there, God commands a blessing. So there is a particular place where God commands a blessing. It is in the fellowship of the brethren. And so I'm glad that you're here. Receive your blessing. I say receive your blessing. You see, in the fellowship of the brethren, the oil flows. The anointing flows. And the blessing is manifested. And God releases joy forevermore. Upon a congregation that have come to worship God. God bless you. 2 Samuel chapter 9. Verse 1, the Bible says, Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kind kindness for Jonathan's sake? Kisha Daudi akasema, Je. Amesalia mtu mmoja katika nyumba ya Sauli nipate kumtendea mema kwa ajili ya Yonatani And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba So when they had, they had called him to David the king said to him Are you Ziba Verse 2 Palikuwa na mtumishi Moja wa nyumba ya Sauli jina lake Siba basi alimwita aende kwa Daudi na mfalme akamuuliza wewe ndiwe Siba naye akasema mimi mtumwa wako ndiye at your service akasema mimi mtumwa wako ndiye then the king said 
Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. Falme akasema, Je, hakuna hata sasa mtu yeyote wa nyumba ya Sauli nipate kumtendea mema ya Mungu siba akamwambia mfalme Yonathani anaye mwana hata sasa aliye na kilema cha Mungu so the king said to him where is he and ziba said to the king indeed he is in the house of makiel the son of amiel in law the bar falme akamwambia yuko wapi siba akamwambia falme tazama yumo katika nyumba ya makiri mwana mwana wa amieli katika lodeba then king david sent and brought him out of the house of makiri the son of amiel from lodeba basi mfalme daudi aka akatuma watu akamuondoa katika nyumba ya makiri mwana wa amieli katika lodeba now when mephibosheth the son of jonathan the son of saul had come to david he fell on his face and prostrated himself then david said mephibosheth and he answered here is your servant basi mephibosheti mwana wa yonatan mwana wa sauli akaenda kwa daudi akaanguka kifudifudi akashujudi daudi akasema mephibosheti naye akaitika mimi hapa mtumwa wako so david said to him do not fear for i will surely show you kindness for jonathan your father's sake and will restore to you all the land of saul your grandfather and you shall eat bread at my table continually daudi akamwambia usiogope maana bila shaka nitakutendea mema kwa ajili ya yonatani baba yako nami nitakurudishia mashamba yote ya Sauli baba yako nawe utakula chakula mezani pangu daima then he bowed himself and said what is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as i akashujudu akasema mimi mtumwa wako ni nini hata ukamwangalia mbwa mfu kama mimi and the king called to ziba Saul's servant and said to him i have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house ndipo mfalme akamuita siba mtumwa wa sauli akamwambia mali yote yaliyokuwa ya Sauli na ya nyumba yake nimempa mwana wa bwana wako you shall therefore and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him and you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat but mephibosheth your master's son shall eat bread at my table always how ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants verse 11 then ziba said to the king according to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant so will your servant do and as for me as for me fibosheth says the king he shall eat 
at my table like one of the king's sons. Ndipo Ziba akamwambia mfalme, mimi mtumwa wako nitatenda hayo yote kama bwana wangu mfalme alivyo niamuru na kwa habari za mefibosheti mfalme alisema atakula mezani pangu kama mmoja wapo ya wana wa mfalme Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Mika and all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were now servants of Mephibosheth Huyo Mephibosheth alikuwa na mwana mdogo jina lake akiitwa Mika na watu wote waliokaa nyumbani mwa Siba walikuwa watumwa wa Mephibosheth So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem for he ate continually at the king's table and he was lame in both his feet Basi Mephibosheth akakaa Yerusalemu maana alikuwa akila chakula siku zote mezani pa mfalme naye alikuwa na kilema cha miguu yote miwili Thank you blessed father for the reading of the word Sante baba mbarikiwa kwa masomo la neno Bless every hearer Bariki kila msikizaji In Jesus name kwa jina la Yesu The message is titled by by Lodiba Ujumbe nimeupa mada kwa heri Lodiberi Everybody shout bye bye Lodiba Say to somebody Ambia mtu Tell another person it's time to bid bye to Lodiba Ambia mwingine ni wakati wa kusema kwa heri kwa Lodibari Tell somebody behind you Ambia mtu aliye nyuma yako It's time to say bye to Lodiba Ni wakati wa kusema kwa heri Lodibari What is Lodiba? Lodibari ni nini? The meaning of that word Lodiba is a place of no communication. Jina Lodibari linamaanisha mahali ambapo hakuna mawasiliano. Is a place of poverty. Ni mahali pa ufukara is a place of begging ni mahali pa kuomba omba is a place of toiling and struggling ni mahali pa kufanya kadi kwa jitihada na kungangana tu it is a place of no achievement ni mahali ambapo hakuna kitu unaafikia unless somebody helps you in lodiba ila tu mtu akusaidie kule Lodibar you will continue remaining in squalor utabaki katika ufukara Lodibar is not the place for any one of us Lodibar si mahali popote kwa yeyote yule I want you to pay keen attention this is the last night for us nataka uwe makini sana maana huu ndio usiku wetu wa mwisho It is important to know that every achievement you make in life is a product of the knowledge you have acquired. Ni muhimu kwako kujua ya kuwa kila mambo ambayo umefanya maishani na kufaulu ni tukio la knowledge maarifa uliyoyapokea. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge Biblia inasema ya kuwa watu wangu waangamia kwa kukosa maarifa There is no shortage of resources on earth Hakuna upungufu wa rasilimali duniani There is no shortage of money on earth Hakuna upungufu wa fedha duniani Everyone that 
owned billions. When they depart the earth, they don't carry that money. Wale wote walio miliki mabilioni wanapoondoka duniani hawaendi na hizo fedha. Those who had houses and they had businesses and they had lands when they depart they leave all those things here. Wote walio kuwa na biashara wakawa na mashamba wakawa na mali wanapoondoka waviacha vitu hivyo vyote hapa. So there's no shortage never be cheated. Usiwai danganya, danganywa hakuna upungufu wa rasilimali duniani. Every achievement, kila mafikio, every success, kila ufanisi that anybody achieves, ambao mtu anapata is a product of decisions they make after acquiring certain knowledge. And they apply that knowledge towards the achievement of whatever they desired. Ni matukio ya uamuzi waliopata na waliupata kutoka kwa marifa fulani ambayo walipokea. I repeat it because it is very important. Narudia hilo mana nila muhimu sana. More than 90% of this congregation are young people. Zaidi ya aslimia tisini ya kusanyiko hili ni vijana. I can categorically tell you this. Na weza kukuambia dahiri shahiri kuwa. God. Mungu. Does not create anyone poor. Haumbi ya yote maskini. God. Mungu. Does not want anybody poor. Hamtaki ya yote maskini. Awe maskini. Never. La hasha. When you came on the face of the earth. Ulipo kuja katika uso wa dunia. God loaded you. Mungu alikujaza. He has downloaded you. Ame kujaza. Right inside you. Ndani yako wewe. There are resources. Kuna raslimali. That if you do not discover. Kuna raslimali. Ili kwamba usipozitambua you will remain unfruitful utabaki ya uzalishi but if you discover lakini ukitambua the capacity uzito of what you own wa kile ulichonacho what you have kile ulichonacho and who you are na wewe ni nani there's nobody hakuna yeyote who can stop you anayeweza kukupokea from being an achiever kuwa wa kupokea nobody hakuna you are the stopper of yourself wewe ndiye unajikwamisha mwenyewe i say again narudia tena it doesn't matter whether you went to class 1 or you reach form 5 or you reach university and you have a doctorate degree haijalishi wewe ulimalizia shule darasa la kwanza ama ukafika kidato cha tano ama ulimaliza chuo kikuu Acts of the Apostles chapter number 8 Matendo ya mitume sura ya 8 verse 38 38 Peter says Petero asema Now I perceive Sasa najua that God Mungu has no partiality Hana mapendeleo But whoever Lakini yeyote whoever awaye yule I say whoever yeyote awaye yule Do we have whoever in this house? Kuna wote awae yule. Lift up your hand and shout I am a whoever. Sema mimi ndiye. Shout it I am an whoever. Sema mimi ndiye. So whoever Lili. in every nation worketh righteousness is accepted by God. Yeyote katika kila taifa afanyayo haki anakubalika na Mungu God has no partiality Mungu hana mapendeleo He doesn't care what color you are Ajali, Ajalishi na rangi ya Whether you are a woman or a man Uwe mwanamke au mwanaume You are a Luya or a Luo Wewe ni Luya au Mluo Ekikuyu or a Kisi Kikuyu ama Mkisi Ebu Hindi or a Mzungu Hindi ama Mzungu God doesn't care Mungu ajali He says Asema I loaded you Nimejaza ndani yako I put things in you Nikaweka vitu ndani yako Make the best use of them Vitumie vyema 
Bible says, says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Bishop, did you come here to talk down on us? No. I came here to tell you it is possible to get out of Lodibari. How many people are born again here? You are a son of God. Your, your father is a king. Your brother is a deliverer. Your brother Jesus entered a covenant to make sure that you don't remain in Lodiba. Listen, when God called Moses and he said, I'm taking you to the promised land, he said, the Canaanites are there. There is no place God has promised you that is not occupied now. Listen to me, little girl. That young man you are admiring, he's already being admired by another woman. That young girl you are looking for to marry, listen to me, young man. Another man, anamwotea, halali, ago again as a cousin seven kunde na hands up. Hata uyo msichana ambaye unaotea wewe kuna mwanaume mwingine anamtaka na anatembea hapa pembeni akiangalia angalia huko namna hivi There is no vacuum on earth Hakuna mahali ambapo hakuna kitu duniani All these shops I see in Gambogi never used to exist Haya maduka yote ambayo yako Gambogi hayakukuepo Majority of the people that are on this market were never there 20 years ago. Wengi wa watu walio katika soko hili hawakuwepo miaka 20 iliyopita. Indians are coming. Wahindi wamekuja. Kikuyu za kame. Wakikuyu wamekuja. Luo za kame. Waluo wa. Luya za kame. Luya wanakuja. And everybody is coming. Na kila mtu anakuja. Because this is no longer a village town. Maana hii sasa sio. We must change our thinking. Wakijijini. Lazima tubadili mawazo yetu. This is a city. Huu ni mji. Kuno handa kukalimi zaka kuzuzu Awalandi nangandata ya haba haba Wono nyuwi ya ngu Wano ukuze honde na gulize Hena ya hondio Hala ni kirindu wa chicho Sasa unakuamia kashamba kadogo Unasema Siwezi uza shamba ni lilo achiwa na baba Utakapo kufa na uzikwe hapo Mwengine atauza hilo Pamoja na kaburi lako Stop lying do you know how many people have lived here and they have died here and nobody remembers their coffee, their, their graves? This church is sitting on somebody's grave. We don't know. I'm changing your mind. Gambogi is a commercial center. Gambogi ni soko la biashara. Stop holding on land that must be developed for the future generations. Usikwamie shamba ambalo lazima listawishwe kwa ajili ya vizazi vijavyo. Actually, if you are buying land here so that you can build a house to live in, you are wasting that land. Bomoa hiyo nyumba jenga duka. Jenga mahali pa watu kuja kuishi because listen in in the entire of Vihiga we do not have houses for workers and people are looking for place to stay. Naona nunua shamba unakaa ndani unaweka mboga na kuku. 
Yaani utogulu mume wako. Asikupati chochote. Uombake nyumba yoko mena muda. Ati watu guys ngoko na 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 bideki. Na mabada. If you look at the commercial value of the piece of land that you are we koyeraku. It has no commercial value. Ambalo unajifanyia ilo shamba ambalo unajifanyia na nile kibiashara ungejua thamani yake. I'm spoiling you. Na kuharibu. Hello. Hello. Slap to people tell them bye bye Lodiba. Piga watu wawili kofi waambie bye bye Lodiberi. You are too rich. Wewe ni tajiri sana. Yet you don't know. Ile hali ya ujui. Everybody shout Mefibo chef. Kila mtu panza sauti sema Mefibo chef. Shout Mefibo chef. Mefibo chef. I didn't hear you shout Mefibo chef. That name Mephibosheth means Jina hilo Mephibosheth ila maanisha that which make destroying shame Kile kitu ambacho kinafanya aibu ya uharibifu That which creates shame Kile kitu kinachoumba aibu That which makes embarrassment Kile ambacho kinaumba yaani aibu That is his name. Ndilo jina lake. Now let me give you a quick history of this young man. Nikupe historia fupi ya huyu kijana. Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan and Jonathan was the son of King Saul. Alikuwa mwana wa Jonathan na yeye Jonathan alikuwa mwana wa mfalme Sauli. Now King Saul did not please God. Na mfalme Sauli hakumpendeza Mungu. And because of God that God rejected him. And they went to war to fight David who had been chosen by God. And eventually Jonathan and Saul died in the battle. I'm just giving you a summary. But before they died, especially Jonathan, when he saw the life of, when he saw David, he loved David like his own soul. And he was supposed to be the next in line to be the king. He was to follow his father Saul. But Jonathan was wise. He saw Jonathan, he saw David. And he realized that David is going to be the king. And so he entered a covenant with him. And when they entered a covenant, first Samuel chapter 18 and first Samuel Samuel chapter 20 you can see that covenant Samuel wa kwanza 18 na 20 unaweza pata maagano hayo and so the bible says they entered a covenant with david na Jonathan wakaingia katika agano na Daudi it was a blood covenant likawa ni agano la damu it bound their souls likafunganisha nafsi zao pamoja they became soulmates wakawa wanaoshiriki nafsi because of the covenant and the promises kwa sababu ya agano na ahadi that had been made by these two young men zilizokuwa zimefanywa na vijana wadogo but Jonathan died lakini Jonathan akafa in battle pale vitani and when Jonathan died in battle it became difficult for the family of Saul to survive. So this boy Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan and this boy was a very young toddler. When 
Saul and Jonathan died in war. Wakati Sauli na Jonathan walikufa vitani. The house of Saul. Nyumba ya Sauli. They ran away. Walitoroka. Because they knew. Maana walijua. Now there's a new king in the house. Sasa kuna mfalme mpya nyumbani. And this new king. Na huyu mfalme mpya. May destroy us. Huenda atatuharibu. So the maid. Basi yule mjakazi. Who was taking care of Mephibosheth. Aliyekuwa anamtunza Mephibosheth. As a toddler. Akiwa mtoto mdogo. Threw the boy on the back and they began to run in the process Mephibosheth slid from the back and fell down and broke his feet and because there was no medication his feet got lame he became lame because of that this maid huyu mjakazi didn't know where to take this boy. So he took the boy to a place called Lodiba. Because she knew that in Lodiba, David will never know to come and kill this boy. So this girl took this boy to a house of a man called Amir. Na sasa huyu mjakazi akampeleka mwana huyu kwa nyumba ya mtu aitwaye Amiel. And when he took him there, he left them there. Na alipompeleka pale, So Mephibosheth grew up as a lame boy in the house of Amiel in Lodiba as a cripple. Sasa Mephibosheth alikuwa akiwa mdogo kilema katika nyumba ya Amiel kule Lodiba. He was a beggar. Akawa muombaji. No food. No parents. Nobody to help. And these people told him. The reason why you are like this. Is because of the king. If the king finds you. He will kill you. Meanwhile, while he is suffering in Lodiba, the house of, of Saul and the properties of Saul were occupied by a housemaid, a house servant who was working there. A lot of wealth. He he took over a lot of properties. It was a king's house. A palace. Kasri. But now a servant mtumwa, who was working in that house pale, he took over because all the family of Saul ran away. Nzima ya Saul so cows, cattle yani ngombe, and everything that was there na kila kitu pale, horses hata farasi, and chariots na hata magari, and big houses na kubu, and huge property of land. Nobody occupied except a man called Ziba. Have you understood the story? So Ziba controlled the wealth that should belong to Mephibosheth. Sasa Ziba akawa anamiliki utajiri ambao ungekuwa wa Mephibosheth. Are you listening to me? So, in other words, we have a royal seed, a child of a king, the person that should be the heir of all those properties, living in Lodiba, struggling, has no food, has no place to live, has no clothes. He is a beggar in Lodiba. And yet, where he should be living, somebody else already has 20 servants, has 15 sons enjoying the property of his grandfather. Kuna kiti cha ufalme, na anaistahili kukaa pale, ametoroka, ameenda kuishi lodiberi, ilihali, mchakazi, ambaye alikuwa na ufanyia kazi ndi anayemiliki mali ya baba yake anawafanyia kazi 20 anawana 15 na anamiliki kila kilichokuwa cha baba yake the reason why he couldn't come is because he had wrong information sababu ya yeye kutokuja ni kwa sababu alikuwa amepata ujumbe potovu 
People said if you go David will kill you. Watu wanamwambia ukienda tu pale unauawa. And David was suffering in his heart because he already made a covenant with Jonathan and he had said to Jonathan I will take care of your children. Ile hali Daudi alikuwa anateseka moyoni mwake maana alikuwa amefanya agano na Jonathan akamwambia Jonathan ikiwa utakufa nitashughulikia watoto wako na jamii. So Jonathan wants to bless. Sasa Jonathan Mephibosheth is in Lodiba. Listen, John, David wants to bless the son of Jonathan. But the son of Jonathan is in Lodiba, Mephibosheth. Struggling in life. Living a poor life. Yet upon his head he is the heir of all the wealth. How many people know that Jesus Christ died for you? Wangapi wanajua ya kuwa Yesu Kristo alikufa kwa ajili yako? And he is sitting today on the right hand of God the Father to bless you. Na ameketi leo hii katika mkono wa kuume wa baba kukubariki wewe. The Bible says for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Biblia sema maana wajua neema ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse number 9 you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ who was so rich but for your sake he became poor so that you that is poor should become rich Jesus when he was crucified on the cross the day he hung on that tree he declared it is over all those who come to me they receive authority to be called sons of God and if they be sons Romans chapter 8 if they be sons then they are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs together with Jesus It is not a privilege for you to be poor. It is a disaster. Shout amen. I know God can change anybody's life. 1982 I was put in prison. I was working in the Air Force. And I was in prison. I went to prison. For 10 years. But by God's grace it was reduced. To 3 years. I had nothing. Everything was destroyed. I left prison without shoes. Without clothes. Without anything. I came back home. In Kitabu. Even neighbors would not welcome me in their houses. I went to one house one day. As I was going and I was I used to sing. I loved to sing because I loved God. I had a very old Bible in my armpit. I'm singing. And the lady had me sing. She opened the window curtains and looked through. I saw her and she ran quickly and closed the door as I came to knock the door she shouted in the house talk up away maskini apana leta watoto wangu maskini na kuna dad aliyekuwa kwenye nyumba alifungua pasia akamuona akija maana alisikia kiimba na alipoona tu ni yeye akakimbia akaja akafunga mlango na alipowebisha sasa askofu alipobisha mlango akamwambia toka hapa hivi mudaka umeoletera bwana wangu mudaka I said thank you. And I looked up to God and I said baba si umesikia? Akamwangalia Mungu akasema hawezi kubali hii injili kwa sababu ya umaskini. They cannot accept this gospel. Hawezi kubali injili hii kwa sababu mbe atiumudaka. 
And I told God, I want you to bless me. I will come back to this house. The blessing of God maketh rich adds no sorrow. And the blessing of God is on the head of the righteous. I can categorically declare to you, you are blessed. I say you are blessed. Wrong information can keep you in Lodiba. I say again, wrong information it will keep you in Lodiba. Jesus Yes. is willing to bless you. Anahiyari ya kukubariki. Wrong information Ujumbe potovu. is keeping you in Lodiba. Una kuifadhi Lodiberi. Within the next one year, kwa mwaka ambao unafuata mwaka, many of you that I'm looking at, wengi wenu nina watazama, you will come back to me and tell me this God is a good God. Utakuja kwa angu na kumuniambia huyu mungu ni mungu muema. Because I declare a turnaround in your life. I say I declare a turnaround. Slap two people and tell them I purpose to turn around. Listen to me. Wealth does not come automatically. When God put Adam in the garden of Eden. He said to him. Work. Work the land. Bible asks a question. Have you seen a diligent man? Bidi. Have you ever seen a diligent man? The Bible says that kind of man will sit with great men. That kind of man. So one of the things you must deal with especially the young men I see here deal with the spirit of laziness. I say deal with the spirit of laziness. Opportunities are available. Fursa zipo. But blindness keeps you away from seeing them. Lakini upofu unakuifadhi kuona. Nobody gets rich by begging. I say nobody gets rich by begging. Nobody gets rich by being employed. On Ninda retirement benefit. There is no retirement benefit. Ya kustafu. Hakuna marupurupu ya kustafu. By the time you retire, that which you call benefit will also have retired. Itakui mekua tired. Kile ambacho unasema ni marupurupu ya kustafu, unapo stafu, di pia nayo itakua ime stafu. God never said he will bless where you are working. God said he will bless the work of your hands. I know I have workers. I have workers. And I still tell them the same thing. You are not employed to work for me until you die. No. Any salary you get. That salary. Is called a seed. That you can use to invest. As a man thinketh in his heart. So is he. Divo alivo. May God bless you. Mungu awabariki. Mm. 
When I received that word, things began to change. I went home, I prayed. Asked God for great ideas. I said, God, give me something that I can do. I took a jembe. Early in the morning, I began to till the land without a tractor. I tilled the land, planted maize, planted beans, harvested six bags of maize, I mean of, of, of beans. I took the six bags, three of them I made a crusade in our village. Three I went to sell. I gave God 50% and the rest I, be, I bought some Matumba bent down boutique shoes and some good nice clothes. At least I looked a little bit decent. And life began from there. Akan Uza, Akapatia Mungu, Asilimia, Amsini, Na Ile Ilio Pata, Ayamisho, Akaweza Kudunua Mitumba. When you share your life with God, God will share his life with you. Unapo Shiriki Mashayako na Mungu, Mungu at Shiriki Mashayake and Awe. That's why I came here to remove people from Lodiba. Today, somebody must move from Lodiba. Let me close by saying, the Bible says, David asked in his house, when he was sitting in his chambers, there was something troubling him. Is there nobody in the house of Saul? I, want, I feel like blessing him. Mephibosheth in Lodiba did not know that. Listen to me. As you are where you are, God can cause somebody in London to begin to think about you. God can start up somebody in Nyahera to think about you. God can speak to somebody in Mombasa to think about you. That's why you need men in your life. Lift up your hand and shout, Lord, send help. So, Ziba came. When Ziba came, he was asked, where do you have any son in this? He said, yeah, we have one young man, he's lame in his feet and he's in Lodiba. David said, quickly, go and bring him. Siba anakuja wanamuuliza kuna mtu kwa nyumba ya Daudi anasema ndio kuna kijana mmoja lakini ni kilema anaishi kule Lodiberi. The reason why The reason why Siba didn't want David to bring this young man is because he was owning the property. Sababu ya Siba and so akawekelea fitina. Sababu ya Siba akasema huyu ni kilema na Daudi Hakupenda vilema. Unanisikia. Daudi hapendi vilema. Siba alitoa viji sababu na kawekelea mengine juu. Ya kuwa huyu ambaya mebaki ni kilema. Na anasema Daudi. Because he knew vilema. that David would not call him. Mana alijua Daudi hawezi kumuita. But the covenant. Lakini lile agano. I say the covenant. Doesn't care of what you are. How you are. How things are around you. It does not matter what people say about you. When the covenant begins to operate for you, nobody can stop you. It was a covenant of blood. The blood of Jonathan was flowing in the, in the veins of David. And that blood was speaking. David said, take a chariot. Take some good workers. Take some soldiers. Go to Lodiba and bring this young man. Daudi akamurusha. Chukua kilicho kizuri na magari mazuri. Enda kule Lodiberi. Leta huyu kijana. 
Mephibosheth is sitting in the dungeons of Lodiba and then he sees chariots, kingly chariots coming and he's wondering what is happening. He sees soldiers coming and when he's looking around, he doesn't know where, whether he's, been, he's being arrested. He doesn't know what is happening and they give him kingly robes right there. They say, they cannot go to the king's house. So they take him to a place, they clean him up, they wash him, they put on new clothes, and they say, now you are sitting in the king's chariot because you are a royal blood. Mephibosheti akiwa ameketi kule mashimoni, lodiberi, anaona magari ya kifahari, ya kifalme, na maaskari, na wanakuja, wanamchukua, wanamuambia, mavazi yayo uwezi ingia na kwenye kasri la mfalme, wanamtoa, wanamvalisha mengine, na anabebo, anapelekwa kwenda kuishi na mfalme. And he's taken to the house of the king. The king looks at him. He asks him, Mephibosheth, you are the Mephibosheth. He says, yes, Here is your servant. David said from today, you are going to eat on my table like the king's sons because you are not a loafer, a beggar in Lodiba anymore. We are bringing you from that lifestyle to a royal lifestyle. Sasa wewe sio mwombaji ambaye anapatikana kule Lodiberi. Leo tunakuleta ukae katika mihimaya na milki ya kifalme. I see God raising your standard. I say, I see God raising your standard. Some of you in the next three months, you'll be sitting in big offices. Some of you in less than seven weeks, you'll be sitting with great men. Because when God begins at work in your life, nobody can stop you. Lift up your hand and say, I'm changing. I am shifting from Lodiba in the name of Jesus. Every bad life, I leave it behind because, oh God, you are my blesser. I receive your blessing. Overnight, overnight, without him knowing, Mephibosheth had left the land of Lodiba sitting in the, in the palace of the king. May God shift your life. I say may God shift your life. There is a turn around. Father in the name of Jesus. I bring this your congregation into thy hands. There are so many who are bound in Lodiba. Living a life that they should not be living. Yet you have called them to be kings and queens. To be a royal family. Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Every bondage. Every powers of the enemy that have bound their minds, every veil that has been covering their minds, every spirit of blindness, in the name of Jesus, I command it to roll away. In the name of Jesus, open their eyes that they see what you have prepared for the things you have prepared for those who love you. Eyes have never seen, ears have never heard. Neither enter the heart of any man. Father, I'm asking for spirit of revelation. Open the eyes. Open the ears. That they hear information that is correct and right. To lead them to better places. May the angels of God guide. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your children. Bless your children.
when visiting Kisumu City, join Bishop Mark Kigohi at Jesus Celebration Center next to the Kisumu National Polytechnic for our Grace Hour and Sunday services. For more information, visit us online. We thank the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media for making this program possible.